Hey everyone, thank you for your patience. I know you've been waiting for this next version for a little bit. Uh, I'm gonna try to make this one as comprehensive as possible to try to answer all of your questions. And a lot of you may know I just moved, started a new job. My time is limited, so I'm gonna try to answer them all here. If not, hopefully you can email me and we can try to troubleshoot some of those issues, but uh, let's try to walk through this now and let me know if you have any questions. You can put a comment below. Whatever you think may be helpful, you can email me. But let's go ahead and get started. So just a walkthrough of everything. I have video instructions on how to create a WordPress site. Get the OpenAI key is necessary for any time you need to generate text. That's what that's important for is text. The, open, the stability AI key is important for image generation. So if you're going to choose to use the image generation using stability AI, you need this key. If you're gonna do anything with WordPress, which I assume you are since you are at this video, you're gonna to need to generate a password or a key using application password. That's this video right here. Uh, if you're gonna get data, so if you want to start using the YouTube feature, you need an API key. There's a video here, this one's not mine. Hopefully I'll get one eventually that's specific for this uh, tool, but this one's somebody else's need to make sure you understand the limitations. I think it's something like 250 queries per day between this and the custom Google search. I'm gonna walk through that a little bit more later, but that's how you get this and set up this Google search on this. We'll talk about how that's used later, but for now you need that set up. Some instructions on how to set up this template and using this template, the WordPress site, make sure you go here to set up your site. If you need a Mac or if you're using Zimrider on a Mac, I have a video here. And I'm also going to work really hard on updating this page on my website to answer any frequently asked questions. So please search here first for your questions or if you have any errors, I'm gonna have those on this page as well. I'm gonna to try to update them regularly. So continue to go back to look to see if there's a new error. If you do find this helpful, please consider donating to me. It's helpful, continue to encourage me, even justify to my wife that I can continue making videos got two young kids under the age of three, so it does continue to help support us, and my time is very limited, so the more support I get, the more time I get to spend towards it. And if, at the very least, just subscribe to my channel, continue to stay up to date on the videos. But we're gonna continue to walk into the usefulness or the features of this sheet. So, if you once you do get your OpenAI API key, you're gonna put it here. I already saved all these values to the sheet, we're going to walk through what that means, but just want to walk through where things go, things like that. But you're not going to see any of my keys in here. That's what's going on here. So the OpenAI API key here, your username, your WordPress password. Again, go to the videos if you have any questions on that. The base URL for your site. Make sure it's that HTTPS colon back slash slash in your website. This is your Google Drive ID folder for images. I recommend that you make three different Google Drive folders. Now, it's important to understand, I would use one sheet per website. Then I would have one of each of these folders per sheet. So how you might break this down into Google Drive, one folder is gonna be for one website, and then within that folder, you're gonna have three subfolders. So one for a Google Drive folder for images, one for articles, and one for interlinking and SEO output if you choose to use that feature. So I have three of those and make sure you save those IDs into the, the sheet. I'll put a link down below on how to find that ID if you have any questions on that. You're gonna put your blog niche here. So if you're gonna say like, oh, I'm gonna be um, an expert in SEO marketing, something like that. Uh, perspective from someone who has 25 years of experience or something like that. Just put your perspective in, continues the guide the AI on like how you want things to go. So if you had a blog niche of let's say dogs, but the perspective might be a dog trainer or the perspective might be a dog breeder, something like that. So that continues to help the AI, AI have an idea of what categories to generate. Use the open AI model here. I like Turbo, it's getting better. Continue, I'm gonna try to continue to add the new models as they come out. But right now, GPT 3.5 Turbo has been doing great, so why move on to any of the other ones? It's the cheapest one, and it's doing the job. Uh, one of the benefits of GPT 3.5 Turbo, 
one, it's cheap and it listens to directions. The reason I don't use DaVinci, it's harder to train it. So 3.5 and GPT-4 both listen to directions. Uh, GPT-4 is a little bit better. So sometimes you might get some issues on output with 3.5, but again, it's getting better. So this, are, this line right here. So if you only want to load articles in the article sheet where the titles are present. So if you generate the article titles with the sheet and you only want to pull those because maybe you have a folder that has more output than you really want, well then this is what you would use. Let's just check that one. And now for the sheet, we do have YouTube integrated into this. Make sure you put your API key here. And if you want to use the custom Google search, which we'll talk about later, uh, make sure you put that CX in here and the key right here. These features are all going to be related. So whenever we generate this custom Google search, we're going to specify how many URLs we're going to use. So we'll talk about that later, but I'm going to walk through the rest of the settings on this image generator. I added back in that you have the option to use Dolly if you want. A lot of people said they found this helpful. I don't particularly love Dolly, but if you do, that's great. These are the features or the settings right here for Dolly. You have three options as far as image size. And then if you want to generate featured images, you can use Dolly and then maybe a stability for subheadings, whatever you'd like, but you have those options here. Now, if you want to use stability AI to generate the images, make sure you have your key here and make sure you look at the settings here to answer any questions you have about what each setting means. Now, I want to highlight this pricing guide right here. So in this pricing guide, you are going to want to go to this page in order to identify how much an image costs to generate. So for example, <coughs> for mine, I like to use this SD XL and it's 512 by 512 is usually the size I like to use, um, somewhere around 50 or hundred steps, but let's say I want to do hundred steps. Well, it costs me less than two pennies. It'll be 0 0.0167. So less than two pennies per image generated. In contrast to Dolly, which is two cents per image. So Dolly is more expensive, just keep that in mind. Um, as you increase the number of steps, it gets better at identifying what you're trying to say. So if you're like, I don't love the images at 30, go to 50, go to 100, go to 150. By 150, you should get pretty dang good images. It's just expensive and sometimes it's overkill. So, and then that's gonna be a little bit more than Dolly. So that's up to you as far as that goes. But with the price that you use, let's say you want to do this. You want to use this 0 0.0167 per image generated. Well, down here, you're going to have the option here to manually input the cost of an image generated. So for example, we're going to use this 512 by 512, 100 steps in this stability, in this stable diffusion XL beta, which is this SDXL can use that one. I'm going to put in that price. So I'm going to say 0167. So that's what it is. And what that does is it's going to be helpful in calculating the cost as you go down here. So again, you can put that in, change your settings, change your image style. Those are the options from stability. Um, you can do that with the subheading images. I'll go ahead and do that there. And so we're getting set up here. So this is, this is how you set up the images, subheading images, things like that. Then down here, so this is if you're trying to SEO optimize to the best of your ability, the pages that you're trying to generate. What I wanna bring your attention to is the optimized slug. With the optimized slug, this is gonna opt, if you have this checked, it's gonna optimize it at two instances. And I recommend only choosing one might be a little difficult. You might figure out a way to work around this, but what I'd recommend is using this whenever you upload your post to WordPress. At that point, it's going to create a new slug that's SEO optimized according to OpenAI. It's going to generate text. It's going to try to contract that into smaller. So that way when it posts it, it's going to be that shortened URL. Um, and then if you want, whenever you're using the rank math tab, what it does is it'll pull your post from the website down and optimize them. I'm not going to touch on that one in this video. There's another video right here on information on how to use that and all the rest of these three. 
Now for the cost, this is going to be uh, generated. So this one says no estimates for images generated using Stability AI. This is only if you put in that manual information. As you put in that manual information, it's going to use that to estimate it. Please understand though, these are estimates. I can't guarantee that this is always going to be perfect or things like that. I don't know where all the costs come from sometimes, so I'm going to try to do that to the best of my ability. And before you get started, we have two check boxes down here. You need to make sure that you check each of these. So that just says you agree to open AI API's terms. And this is just for the sheet. Whenever you do this, it's going to present you with a box and you're just going to click yes. Now, where do you get this sheet? Well, in order to get this sheet, just go to my website. I'm going to put a link down below in order to get to my website. It's going to be in this first link right here. And when you do that, it's going to ask you to create a copy. This is going to create a copy. You can name it whatever you want and use that sheet. I'm going to go back to the sheet. Now, once you have everything saved, you're going to go to AI assistant, script keys, store all keys. So then everything gets saved. What happens, this helps it run faster and it'll have the option if you need to do something like I am where you're maybe sharing the sheet with somebody else and you don't want them to see it. Well, it's hidden here, it's still stored in the script, but it's hidden here. If you need to delete your, all your keys, you can. So if you're going to share it, make a copy, et cetera, you can do that. Um, if you want to store all of your keys, what happens if you make, if you make a change and then try to run it, it's going to give you an error messages asking you to store all your keys again. This was happening because a lot of people were changing keys, coming up with issues. So I just put in a default that said, if you change it, you're going to need to save your keys again. But now you have the option to ignore that if you did this purposefully something like this. This last one right here, if you need to update the list of Stability AI engines, I know that they are constantly developing engines. So if you need to do that, you can. And what happens, it's going to update the list down here. It's going to update those. So now that we've done that, we're going to go ahead and get started. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about generating category. Okay, so now we're in the categories tab. I'm going to show you in this one, I have four categories that are already on my website. I uh, just want to show you how to generate more categories. AI Assistant, Categories, Generate Categories. So what happens is it's going to add to this page. It's going to add me a few more. It's going to try to get me up to 10. So then once I am there, what is going to happen is I want to either upload them to WordPress, which you can do right here, or you can move on to the next sheet. So what I'm going to do now, I don't really want these right now. I'm just I'm not going to add them to my website and leave them there. I'm actually going to just limit it down to one category. Just this is for demonstration purposes. Then so I go to the tags, go to AI assistant tags. Now I'm going to generate max tags. And so what's going to happen is it's going to generate tags for the category. Now, I know a lot of y'all don't use tags, don't really care about tags. But what do the tags do is really it's just a keyword prompt. So it's as it's incorporated into the script, it's going to help prime the AI to understand what keyword am I trying to hit? What category am I trying to hit? Now I'm going to generate articles for that. So that's what this is. It might be more helpful to think of this as a keyword, but it's going to be added to the tag too, if you want it to. So what do I mean by that? The tags, you can add the tags to WordPress. If you want to add the tag to WordPress, just recommend doing that as a good practice. Um, but then you can go ahead and add in something like this. So let's see. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do, I'm going to just do AI powered SEO tools. How about that one? Again, this is just demonstration purposes. You can do however many you would like. But then let's, if we want to, oh, I also want to know what is, a lot of people ask, what does the skip category do? Well, the skip category is really generated as it's going through the categories and generating things. Sometimes the script times out. What does that mean? Well, the script can only run for six minutes. That is a Google Sheets limitation. Uh, I'll talk a little bit more later about how to get around that, but I'm continuing to work on that, but it's going to have to start over where it left off. And so the skip helps you uh, assign that and say, hey, this is where it left off. Keep going. So that's what's happening here. And that's what's happening. That's why it's blank. But if I were to start to generate articles. So in here, I have nothing in my articles tab. AI assistant tags, generate or article titles, generate max article titles. So right now it's working on generating article titles 
for the AI powered SEO tools, the related categories. And so then the skip gets loaded to say, this is where I left off. So I've already generated those and we'll go to the articles tab and we have some right here. So it's only, right now it's only gonna generate five per tag. Why is that? Well, I felt whenever it started to generate 10, it was generating duplicates, things like that. When I first developed the tool, I thought it would be helpful just to give a lot and then start to narrow it down as you went. But now I realize people are trying to use this for more bulk adding. So I went ahead and narrowed it down so the, the titles would be a little bit more on point. What you'll find is if you did previously use these versions, I did seek to improve it on this one so that there shouldn't be any duplicates in either the categories, subtopics, to article titles, etc. They should be unique at this point and they should be pretty good, hopefully. Um, you'll find that. And so what we can do here with the article titles, this is an awesome point. So if you have Zimwriter, so I want to encourage you, Zimwriter right here, um, please use my link in the description below, below to purchase this product. That just help, continues to help support me via the affiliate link. That's down below. Websites, again, here. But you can use Zimwriter to max generate content so how are we going to do this well so with the article titles we already have the article titles i just need a list for zim writer so what we're going to do with that is we're going to generate a semicolon list so column values as semicolon separated list and that's going to be here so each article title is separated by a semicolon then we can go into zim writer do bulk blog writer and paste them in here we can do our settings in here as far as, let's say we do want to do five, short, whatever you'd like to do, go ahead and put them in here, use whatever settings you want, and then you can hit start bulk writer. Um, what, if you want to add images to the subheadings, you need to make sure that the enable mid journey prompt for each H2 is selected. I might try to go back and add this so that if you don't select it, it'll still generate them. Um, something I'm kind of chewing on, whether or not it's important or not. Um, but make sure it's like that if you want images to be generated for each subheading. So it'll use that. And then you can go ahead and hit start bulk writer. Make sure that number matches up with this number. And then you go ahead and move on. I am not going to load this one. Again, I just want to show you guys how this all works. So I'm actually, eh, no, I'm not going to use it. I'm not going to close that yet. I'm going to move that back over here because I want to show you uh, as far as using this Penny Arcade, I'm going to show you that here right now. So the Penny Arcade, what it's going to say is it wants URLs. So a list of URLs, how many t article titles or text up to 10,000 words, and you have settings here. Um, what I want to do is show you one of the new features of the sheet. So if you want, we now have an SEO blog sheet. So what that's going to do, let's go ahead and skip to that one. Uh, this is for if you think article title generation. So we want to SEO blog generation. We want to get posts from our article tab. So we want to make sure that there are some in here. Get posts from article tab. So what it's going to do is in these titles. So these are the same titles, same sub subtopic, same category. You can copy and paste them or click the button, whatever you'd like. Then from there, you can do create queries for each article. Well, what is a query? Well, what that's gonna be is, this is what you would think of as you're searching Google. Uh, so say I wanna learn more about the future of SEO, AI powered technology. So it might be something like, how can bloggers use AI powered SEO tools to improve their website search rankings, things like that. You may seek to find some better options here as far as doing this. This is kind of the first iteration I'm gonna try to continue to improve this. What that does is once I get this, um, then we can go to AI Assistant and then get URLs for each article. So it's gonna look through this query and create the first unique article for that query. When I say unique, it's gonna make sure that it doesn't already exist and it's gonna pull that first query or that first article. So then what we're gonna do, let's say we want to use this Penny Arcade and just summarize each of these. So we're gonna copy those to the Penny Arcade and go here. So now we have URLs that are gonna be unique. We're gonna have five, and I haven't tested this with a thousand articles. I know a lot of y'all are going big. Let me know if this doesn't work for a thousand articles or more. Um, I think it should, 
There might be some limitations. I really don't know. I haven't tried to break it that hard yet. Um, but you can use whatever settings that you want, you can include in here. At this time, it doesn't look like there are any options for generating those uh, subheading images. I haven't quite had time to test the Penny Arcade yet. I think it's a lot of fun, a lot of great ideas. Uh, but what I envisioned for this feature, so not the Penny Arcade, but for this feature in Google Sheets, is I hope that Matt will write or build out the bulk SEO blog writer. So what that means is in the bulk section or in the SEO blog writer section, you have the option to set a blog post title. So if you wanted to do future of SEO, AI power technologies, great. Um, and then you have the option to add URLs now into the writer into this section. So what does this mean? Well, right now we're only generating one. Why are we generating one URL per query? Well, if you remember, I only have one set right here. You can change it up to however many as you want. It's only going to pull that many and it's going to load them into this SEO blog sheet. And so if you say, let's say you wanted to do this one into here and you wanted to pull in three URLs closely related to this. Well, you would pull them in there um, and they would load here and you can begin to generate H2s using the AI things like that um, and build this out. I think this would be awesome if we could get each of these settings as different columns in this Google Sheet. But what I need you to do is make that request of Matt. So make sure to do that feature request. I'll put a link down in the description below to request that of him is to generate or to integrate a bulk SEO writer. And so that is what the purpose of this sheet is. And I'm going to continue to build this out. If, you, if he does end up adding that feature, please expect an update from me in order to integrate this sheet into that bulk writer. <coughs> okay, so now I'm gonna go back to this articles tab. I am going to remove some of these, I'm gonna remove these for now. <clears throat> I just wanna show you what happens whenever you have an article from Zimwriter uploaded to a Google folder. So in this example, I have one, I have an article loaded to a Google folder. I just won, just cause again, I just wanna show you an example, but I'm going to load that article in here. There's nothing in here right now, but to do that, we're gonna do posts and we're gonna upload from the Zimwriter folder. What folder is that? Well, that's gonna be that's gonna be the folder right here where you have that ID set. I'm gonna to go to, again, back to articles, AI assistant, post, upload from Zimwriter folder. So now, because I have the checkboxes selected in order to generate the images, and I said, please optimize this for SEO as far as the slug goes, we're gonna walk through that a little bit. So what it's gonna be, how to generate images using AI. Okay, so that's the full title. So in theory, the slug would just be a dash between each of these, right? <clears throat> the meta description is getting loaded from the uh, Zimwriter page. The subtopic and categories, these are, you can add these in manual if you want, but these are going to be um, generated by the last step. I didn't do that for this article. So if you want to go start to finish, it would have this as well. Now in here, if you want to you have three options as far as what to do with this article. So let's say you want to just send this up as a draft to WordPress so someone else can edit it later. You have that option. If you want it so it publishes right away, you can do that. Or if you want to if you want to send it to WordPress with the intention of WordPress publishing at a certain time, you can do that as well. That's what the future selection is. So if you do select the future selection, make sure that you publish the, or put the date and time in here. So let's say it's, um, I don't know, let's say it's Christmas this year, 12, 2023. That's what it's gonna be. So it's gonna publish on Christmas and make sure you add a time if you wanna publish it at a certain time. I am going to do a draft for this example. Uh, allow comments, so if you want to leave the comments available, you can, I just do close. The content is getting generated um, right now, what's happening is it's going to start it's generating images for the featured images in each subheading image. 
And as it's generating those subheading images, it's inserting them into that text. And ultimately, whenever all those subheading images do get generated, it's gonna output an HTML text that's gonna get uploaded to Zimrider. So it's building that right now, and that's what's happened. So this is the text from the article, and you can see in here that it is generating that into there. Um, and then if the, what happens here, uploaded to WordPress, again, this is just to remember where it left off as it's publishing things to WordPress. And then as we move, let's see, post ID, this is gonna get loaded. Um, whenever it does get uploaded to WordPress, it's gonna put it in here. Date created, it's gonna save that automatically. URL is gonna save as well for tracking. If you did have that uh, auto generator optimize the slug at the very beginning, it'll do that here as well. Um, but you'll also be able to manually insert yours as well if you'd like. And these are the images that are getting created, including how much they cost. Um, this one hasn't necessarily got loaded yet, but then as I mentioned previously, those subheading images, the information for that is all here as well. So then if you want to load these to WordPress, you go to AI Assistant, Post, you have two options. So you can upload the next article to WordPress. That's one option. Now, when might you want to use this? So let's say you want to drip your post to WordPress. You say you have, I don't know, a hundred of these articles or something like that, and you want to drip them regularly, let's say every couple hours. Well, then you'll need to set up a trigger. Uh, I'm going to put a link down in the description below on how to set up a trigger, but a trigger, what it is, is going to be a scheduled time to run a, a function. The function in this case might be uploading the next post to WordPress. So you do that and you upload the next article to WordPress. Great. Or you can upload all of them at once, upload all posts at once. Fantastic. It's going to do that as well. Um, and then every once in a while, this get missing thumbnails every once in a while. So I found this whenever I was trying to publish maybe a hundred articles or 200 articles or something like that. Every once in a while, this featured image URL field did not get filled out. Well, that was important because that is where it's going to pull that it featured image from in order to load it as a featured image in the post. So if that doesn't happen, you can use that post and it's going to, you're going to do that and you can upload that to the, um, website but whenever you do upload it so upload all posts whenever it does upload it should generate that featured image URL automatically um, so after it gets generated you're gonna see this start to get filled out and that's at yes awesome this is the post ID as I mentioned all the way through the featured image URL so at this point you're generating posts to WordPress. Um, some things that I'm going to just want to make you weary of. Um, sometimes people send me inf send me information that says, "Oh, I got a server 500 or above error." Well, or uh, error 500 or above. That is a server error. I can't help you at all with that. All I can say is reach out to whoever you're hosting, whoever is hosting the website. Ask them what they can do about it. If there is some sort of way that the script is interfering with it, I don't know. Most people don't have this problem, but I do get this every once in a while. 500 and above, I can't do anything about. That's on the other side's end. It got sent. One host that I just want to recommend is On Budget Services right here. Mike is somebody that you can reach out to. I'll put his email down below, but you can also reach out here in order to get questions answered. He's a subscriber to this channel. I know he uses it. I know this is going to be a great resource for you with $75 per month may sound like a lot, but if you're building a business, this is going to be awesome because you're going to have virtually unlimited opportunity to add domains. It's up to 50 at first and then as a soft limit, and then you'll be able to f add five more after that by just reaching out. Um, that's how you can continue to add more websites and host more websites. They have great speeds, etc. So also, I just want to mention if you do choose to use them, I have a code down below that'll give you 10% off for the lifetime of the membership. So that would be about 750 off for the lifetime. It'd be uh, a little over $75 a year in savings. So make sure to use that code down below. If it's 400, well then that's information potentially on our end. So usually if you don't fill out the right username or password, 
you might get authorization issue. Uh, 429, if you get error 429 with OpenAI, that's a rate limiting. That means it was requested too many times. So just wait a second, try again. Those are some of the most common ones. Again, if you do have an error with that, go back to the, the errors page right here and try to look for an update and see if there's one there. I'm gonna to try to update those regularly. So uh, there we are with that. Let's see, I wanna walk through some of these new, so set up posts for interlinking. I'll put a video down below if you have questions about interlinking. This uses Link Whisperer. Um, I'm gonna to try to improve this in future versions. So let's see how that goes. Optimize posts for SEO. This is intending to use Rank Math Pro with SEO. This is not this video. I didn't change any of the features in that, so that's gonna be about the same. But what I do wanna talk about is adding videos from YouTube. So adding videos from YouTube. Okay, why is this cool? Let's go to this one. So for this one, say post, or are you adding videos from YouTube? You have the option to get published posts, which are gonna pull from your website. So let's go ahead and start there. Okay, so this one, it added a lot to this website. Again, I'm gonna narrow it down just to one, just for this safe example. So what you're gonna see, the title of the post is here. There's no query yet. To do this, we're gonna do adding videos from YouTube, generate YouTube query terms. What's important to note is there is a limit on the number of queries you can do per day. If you're going to use this the free account um, you need to make sure that you sign up for a workspace account if you want to increase the number of queries, but I think it's like 250 queries per day um, at this. But the queries are going to be for both YouTube and for that Google search. So the generating the queries using OpenAI, so that is not part of the 250. But once you go to get a URL, that is part of it. So what we're talking about the title, query, post ID, post URL. The excerpt of description, this is from the website. So this is part of my post. Let's say I want to, I, I want to incorporate all of those things together to get a YouTube video. So what it's doing, it just searched for YouTube is introducing Link Whisper, a game changer for internal link building and SEO. So let's go, let's see how it did. Awesome, hopefully this guy has a great video but it is related to internal linking as far as WordPress goes. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that. And then again, this uploaded to website column, that's just tracking if it got uploaded to the website. Uh, it, that's how it knows where it got cut off at. Let's see, going through, um, uh, covered. Oh, so then if you wanna upload these to YouTube, what it's gonna do is it's gonna go through each of those posts you have and then it's gonna add that YouTube video at the very top. We can talk later about if you want top, bottom, et cetera, et cetera, but make sure that's gonna add it at the very top. Um, we already talked about that. Okay, so what to expect in future versions. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to stick to this, but this isn't like a order as far as how I'm gonna hit everything. This is just the, some of the things that I want to hit on. Um, so I know a lot of people are asking for integrated SEO tools. I personally think it might be easier just to do that all on Google Sheets, right? So what happens in a normal SEO tool is they will, uh, they'll do that Google search that I showed you already, and then they'll scrape each site and develop keywords from that content. Again, that can be done in Google Sheets. Uh, I think you have to use some different APIs, things like that. I have to look more into that, so I don't know if it's necessary to integrate another SEO tool, but some of them do have features and scores that I wouldn't be able to develop in this. So if there is a tool that comes out that is super helpful, that does have an API, let me know. I'll try to integrate that into here. Otherwise, I might just keep moving forward in such a way that maybe we can do it in this Google Sheet. Maybe save you a little bit of money. I know that there are issues with the time restrictions. I am working on this. I know the number of triggers you get uh, can be limited. If you use a workspace account, you can use more, and that does help people get past some of this timing issues. But again, you only get six minutes per execution, and I think there's 48 per day, some 50 triggers per day, something like that. So you'd have to run it every half hour. So there's that lag time. But if you do 
go to a workspace account, I think you can do a lot more. I'm not 100% sure on that. Uh, I am working on getting an affiliate link for that, but workspace is through Google. If you do choose to do it, I'm going to try to put an affiliate link down below whenever they give it to me. Please use that just to help support me. Um, another thing, I'm going to work on an option to add images, even if you don't have prompts. That's for people that have content that isn't previously produced or forgot to add that feature or that, that button. Oh, long content handling. So sometimes, so each cell is limited to 50,000 characters. That's a lot of characters, but some people are using really massive articles, so they don't necessarily fit into that. Uh, I have ideas on how to, how to use this. It's going to take a little bit of time to me coding. So it's just on the, I know how to do it. I have a plan on doing it. It's just going to take me a little bit of time. So it's on the list of future versions. Um, I'm going to try to do better, better error handling to address the common problems, maybe provide a solution within the sheet. Uh, etc. And then I'm going to try to give you more tutorials specifically on how to get Google Search Console set up. The link in the first tab was not a video, it was just a description. It was from Google, helpful, but sometimes people like video generation. I would love to integrate the Google Search API with Zimwriter to try to get the bulk SEO blog writer set up. I think that would be awesome. And you hear me a lot talking about Zimwriter. If you do have curiosities, questions, please use my affiliate link to purchase this. I'll get a little bit percentage. It doesn't cost any more from you. Just help support me in this channel to continue to make content. And I also want to bring your attention down here. Make a feature request to Zimwriter. By doing that, ask for the bulk SEO writer. The more we do that, the higher it's going to move up on the priority list. So if we could do that, that would be fantastic. Okay, so then the other things... What I just want to ask you, these other things, please, again, if you do find this helpful, please donate to me. That just continues to support me. And you can click this in order to subscribe to my channel. I hope this answers all of your questions. I hope you guys love this sheet. Please continue to put encouragement in the comments below. But if you do have any questions, please comment down below. If you do have a question, make a new comment for each question. If you reply to your own comment, I don't get the notifications for that. So I don't know if you asked or not. I have to find another way to track it. And because my time is limited, sometimes it's hard for me to go back and look through all the other comments to make sure I answered everything. So please, again, new comment for each new question you need to ask. Please reach out if you need help. Please like this video, subscribe to my channel uh, so that we can continue to make more great content.